And hello there and welcome to Sook Exclusive. My name is Lovina Emma. I am your host this afternoon and I have a very distinguished guest joining us this afternoon and his name is Mr. Jude Chiemeka. He is the Chief Executive Director of Nigerian Exchange Group. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, Mr. Jude. All right, thank you. Um, I'm actually the CEO of NGX Limited. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. And this is Sook exclusive, and we're going to be discussing Mr. Jude's career, his background, and why he chose the financial industry to grow his career. So first of all, let's just start with um, getting to know you better, Mr. Jude. Now, get to know more about you. Please, can you tell us um, about yourself? Okay, um, Jude Chemeka. I'm from Delta State. Um, I have background in science, started out uh, biological sciences and I migrated from that to, to business where the interest really lies. Uh, so I have a postgraduate diploma in economics from the University of Lagos. Uh, my first degree actually was also uh, BSc Sciences from the University of Lagos and I have a master's degree in international law and diplomacy also from the University of Lagos. Um, but I've also I've uh, done a lot of executive uh, education courses across different geographies. Um, New York Institute of Finance, uh, University of Oxford, uh, Lagos Business School, uh, and more, more recently London Business School. And the whole idea is just to have a more holistic approach uh, to emerging uh, thoughts. Uh, as a thought leader, it's always important to be abreast of emerging patterns uh, in, in terms of what is going on globally uh, to be able to domesticate some of those knowledge uh, to promote uh, more financial inclusion in our own markets. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Okay, that's a very remarkable educational background and everything about yourself. Okay, now um, to get to know uh, more about you, um, when did you decide to go into um, Nigeria's financial industry? Um, so in my second year in university, uh, way back, I, I watched a movie called Wall Street um, and I was really intrigued by the movie. Um, it was largely around investments in the financial market, stockbrokers engaging with investment bankers. I've, I found the uh, whole concept very intriguing, um, obviously as a young person trying to determine how to navigate your career. Um, even at that early age, it was very beckoning. So I felt that is where I should actually pitch my tent. Um, and I was fortunate enough uh, uh, to meet a lady called Mrs. Adenero, who was the who was the first, if I'm not mistaken, the first female uh, chartered accountant president of Nigeria. And at the time, she had a stockbroking firm um, she was running called the Million Trust. And I, I approached her because we were neighbors. Um, and she was like, look, you need to finish school first because it's a very um, intense program uh, for you to become a stockbroker. You have to finish school. And so when I finished, uh, I went to her and she accepted me. So that's how I started as an intern. Um, more like out of school and the interest was really capital markets and in those days to become a stockbroker it's not like the way it is now you have to be introduced uh, by a stockbroking firm to the stock exchange who will then consider your application and accept you to to, to be trained uh, to be accepted into that exclusive club of uh, city gentlemen which largely at the time was a, a, a male denominated um, uh, club um, but with time that has been modernized so people are doing um, Chara Institute of Stockbrokers exams now uh, both sexes but, but but back in those days it was purely a male affair females were not allowed to train as stockbrokers uh, and then I qualified in 1996 uh, as a broker dealer and the rest they say is history Hey, yes, that's very true. You know, considering the fact that you said you watched um, the movie Wall Street and that was what motivated your decision. I mean, most people watch movies and then they decide, oh, I, I want to be an actor or an actress. So that's, I would say that's a very unique and it's 
it also um, brings more light to your very unique personality. Okay, now um, after so once you started off your career, your career in that path, then um, did you face some challenges? Like, was it um, a decision your family readily accepted, or it was something you had to go about convincing them? Um, so I largely I come from a very broad-minded family, so there was really no objection uh, when I made up my mind that that's what I wanted to do. We were really free to choose. What was important was you needed to be a graduate. That was almost like uh, a standard requirement. You didn't have a voice until you had graduated from school. So when uh, I decided to go into that area, it was largely a choice that I made uh, with a lot of obviously family support and encouragement. But what, what is really key uh, in my journey is that I've been fortunate to meet people uh, that are well vast by just by divine orchestration uh, because when I left Dominion Trust I also worked with a firm called Sec Trust which was a leading uh, stockbroking firm at the time um, and it was being managed by Mr. Golden Obaseki, His Excellency Golden Obaseki, who is now the, state, the governor of Edo State uh, and I worked with him for 11 years and in the course of that uh, sojourn there uh, I was exposed to a lot of international best practices. Uh, we did quite a lot of exotic things back in those days. Uh, we were the first uh, institution to, to talk about global depository receipts, where we helped UBA uh, through JP Morgan to uh, create global, global depository, depository receipts for, for international investors looking to invest in Nigeria. But because of compliance, we're not able to do that. Uh, by reason of that global depository receipts, they were able to invest in the global depository receipts and on aligning assets were shares uh, of United Bank of Africa. Uh, away from that, uh, we did quite a bit in helping during the first round of banking consolidation. Uh, we did introduce that uh, element to banks like Guarantee Trust Bank, uh, Zenith Bank who utilized that to raise capital uh, after that uh, consolidation and we were also fortunate to to be the uh, leading institution around euro bonds uh, in this country I mean if you talk about euro bonds African West did play a critical role in, in helping institutions to even understand and appreciate uh, the use of that uh, instrument to be able to raise capital so we have large, by and large uh, created uh, a leading uh, pipeline for domestic institutions to utilize uh, international uh, model of capital raise uh, and when I left uh, uh, Sectrust or Afro Invest, which Sectrust later metamorphosed into Afro Invest, you know, when I left I joined Renaissance Capital as the first CEO uh, of their securities trading business and at Renaissance um, there was a lot of uh, involvement with internationals who were on the buy side looking to invest in Nigeria and so in 2008-2009 there was a lot of uh, influx of internationals into Nigeria and the market at the time used to trade like 150 million to 200 million dollars a day uh, just to put it in perspective today we're trading less than 10 million dollars a day but there was a lot of liquidity on the back of inflows of a lot of internationals at the time it was a 50 50 split between international investors in nigeria uh, and domestic investors in nigeria and then later uh, the whole thing because of the fx challenge that we're facing now uh, we now have more domestic uh, investors in Nigeria and, and less of international. Uh, and Renaissance did bring a lot of research to our market. Uh, there was a lot of uh, coverage, uh, very specialized uh, individuals, talented, who were covering different sectors of economy. And that created a holistic approach to the Nigerian financial sector. Uh, so away from the banking, um, there were also opportunities in insurance, com in insurance companies who tried to raise capital uh, at the time and also there was a lot of extensive co coverage for the traditional B BCC which is the banking, consumer goods and then the cement. So the building material sector did get a lot of coverage as well and it's not a surprise um, that today we have them as one of the most capitalized companies. Uh, that are listed on the exchange. So away from uh, Renaissance, uh, I went into 
uh, I went to I went to work for Chapel Hill. Uh, and I was responsible for Chapel Hill Denham Securities at the time. Uh, we traded up and became a top ten. At the time I left, I think we were quite a market share of four percent. So we had done quite a lot, uh, just curating on the back of the research, uh, trying now to utilize that knowledge to gain domestic. Because Chapel Hill is really entrenched domestically. Uh, to work the domestic market and gain more mileage from the domestic uh, participation in our market. And that really opened up a lot of uh, doors for the domestic investors. Uh, so we had a very good platform to marry international interests with domestic uh, interests. So there was a lot of uh, liquidity and other flow uh, within, that, uh, within that space. And I also went into asset management at the time, uh, and they had a couple of funds that they were managing, uh, which were doing very well uh, in terms of the return. So all that insight uh, made me to go into banking and uh, went to work for the under uh, UBA asset management and later you know, UBA stockbrokers. And, and eventually, uh, due to the consolidation, is spun off to become United Capital. Uh, that we have today that is listed on this change. It's been an interesting journey. Uh, and I must say that I'm really grateful to the many people, mentors uh, who have guided me. Uh, in terms of career, it's not something you do in isolation. You just have to pay attention to people who are doing what you are aspiring to do. Uh, it, it makes a lot, a lot of sense to, to have mentors who will guide your decision and also help navigate because it's really important uh, to learn from the mistakes of others instead of trying to make your own mistakes. Yes, yes, that was, that was well said. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Chiamaker. Now let's take a short break. When we return, we're going to discuss further with Mr. Chiamaker. Do join us after the break. Welcome back and we are still on Sook Exclusive. I am your host Lavina Emma and I'm with Mr. Jude Chiemeka, the Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Exchange Group Limited. So it's been really great having these discussions with you and um, giving us an extensive look into your background everything. Now let's talk about the Nigerian stock market. It's um, undergone some changes in recent years, especially the technological input. Well, before we get right into that, let's talk about your entry into the stock market. Now, um, I would like to know what motivated you to get into the Nigerian stock market. And um, yes, so far, how's the journey been there? All right, so just away from the initial interest to join the Nigerian capital market uh, from school, uh, qualifying as a stockbroker, and then now going into the capital market as a Obviously, as a stockbroker working for a stockbroking firm, um, it became clear that some of the uh, policies, some of the practices uh, from the uh, regulatory uh, angle uh, needed to have more um, market uh, interfacing uh, contribution so that it was easier uh, to come up with products, to come up with practices and rules uh, that will align with the people that you call market operators. So in 2019, uh, I made that decision that I would like to join uh, the Nigerian Exchange, uh, which was a, at the time Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, when I joined, I joined as head of trading uh, business uh, and the, the mandate really was to help create products uh, that we help deep in the capital market um, and we hit the ground running um, just trying to uh, create more awareness of the products that are even being offered uh, and create more participation along those products that were existing in securities lending uh, for instance uh, but more importantly to even try to create new products uh, that will match the interest of the uh, retail investors in our market and at the same time products that will help direct the market so we're talking about creation of uh, derivatives, which today we have long, launched the uh, NGX index futures, which helps to de-risk the market. And we're looking now to launch the single stock features, which will help investors uh, really to de-risk de the volatility that they face when they buy or invest in the, in the capital market. So away from 
the trading business, the, the stock exchange itself went through a process of demutualization, uh, which uh, transi transitioned the mutual entity of the exchange into now a shareholder based business. So it's now a business uh, that is owned by shareholders where largely uh, the, uh, the trading license holders. And that has uh, op opened up the exchange to be a more competitive environment, uh, to be more internationally focused and to be able to do a lot more uh, in aligning the interest of the capital markets and galvanizing all of that to help the government to raise capital uh, as well as corporates to be able to raise capital in a seamless manner, uh, allowing investors access to these products seamlessly utilizing technology. So to the year to date at the NGX, we've raised or we've facilitated the raise of 5.7 trillion uh, naira for, for governments, corporations uh, who utilize our platform. And obviously this banking consolidation brings to bear the very heart uh, of the NGX, which is the technological backbone that the NGX provides that allows investors to trade seamlessly. Uh, since I joined, uh, we haven't had any down time or down day at this change where the, where the trading engine has not been working because it works in a seamless manner because of the, all the many investments that the NGS have made in technology thanks to the foresight of the previous CEO, uh, Mr. Oscar Oyema, who really uh, came to re fine-tune the market uh, and lay the foundation for the technological back backbone that it, the market is enjoying today. Uh, Technology continues to be really the uh, the heart of the NGX tech, uh, strategy, and we believe that we can use it to create products uh, and allow investors to to trade and participate in our markets uh, in a seamless manner, both from the trading license holders themselves and, and the retail investors who utilize our market. So today, people can trade uh, from the comfort of, of their homes; they don't have to go to the floor like they did in the past to trade. So all of that has been made possible because of this uh, reliance on technology, which will continue uh, to, to happen. Because as you know, the NGX is also a part of the uh, African Security Exchanges uh, Association, which is really based on integrating uh, stock exchanges in, in Africa across different markets and that thrives on technology. So today you can trade seamlessly into Ghana, uh, Mauritius, uh, Casablanca, South Africa, utilizing this technological backbone that we have uh, to drive increased participation across different markets in Africa. Wow. That, that is really a whole lot of improvement, a whole lot of progress from back in the 19th century to what we have, I mean, back in the 20th century to what we have right now in the 21st century, and very impressive. Okay, now looking at your career so far, um, did you face any challenges um, while you were going up to your current stage right now? Well, challenges are part of are part of life, to be honest. Um, so I won't really see them as challenges because even now the environment that we, we find ourselves appear, appears to be challenged, but then it offers a lot of opportunities. Challenges around even trying to find uh, the right place. Like I said, uh, when I was joining this industry, you couldn't just join, you had to be introduced. So finding uh, the trading license holder who will take a, a bet on you uh, to introduce you to the stock exchange to allow you to train. Um, there were challenges around that. Uh, it took me three years after I joined Dominion Trust to be, to, to be, to be referred to the exchange uh, to be trained because they needed to be sure that that's really what you wanted to do and then you have to prove yourself. Um, and then working on the market operator side uh, and looking like uh, you have achieved like some form of uh, plateau. Uh, bear in mind that I left AfriInvest as a vice president, head of securities trading, to become the CEO of Renaissance Capital. From there, I became the CEO of Renaissance of uh, Chapel Hill Denham Securities, and I moved to become the CEO of UBA Stockbrokers and later UBA Asset Management. Uh, now, when you are a CEO uh, in a in that capacity, obviously there will be challenges around trying to grow market share, uh, trying to uh, grow your product offerings, uh, trying to be compliant with all the various regulatory uh, 
consideration so that you're running a, an efficient and a transparent business. So you, you're bound to face all those challenges. But the way I've always looked at it is look, there's no uh, problem without a solution. You just have to look at uh, the available models uh, and then you'll be able to come up with the right solution for whatever challenge that you're facing at, at that particular time. Yes, that, that's a very key phrase to look at. Yes, all the challenges will always come, but look for the right model to definitely adapt to those challenges and ultimately overcome those challenges. Now, um, the younger generation, we often refer to them as Generation Z. Now, what would be your advice or what is your advice to them going forward? Well, it's very easy. Uh, one of my mentors is uh, Pastor David Oedipo, who said, said something like, uh, Everyone is busy, right? But it's the results that command respect. So you just have to be a problem solver, uh, results oriented, not just activity based individual. Um, in our time, we were told to be focused on one particular area. Um, and we've tried to do that over a period of time within the same space. But in their own case, I think they should be multi. Uh, talented they should they should be able to find the ability to do several things and not just be you know that concept of jack of all trade and master of none i don't think it applies to this generation so you should be able to do different things uh, and it's important to work on different skills uh, you can't just rely on one skill set uh, but more importantly is to identify really early what you want to do in life stick to it uh, there will be challenges but just stick to it uh, there's need to be persevere to be to persevere, and there's also need to there's need to be uh, result oriented. It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you're result oriented, you will certainly, uh, essentially, get the right result ultimately. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Jude Cheermaker. As we discuss your background and everything concerning your career from when you started off, the reason for going into our finance industry. It's been such a pleasure and very, um, it's been really an eye opener because you really shared so much about your history. This is really wonderful. So many thanks for joining us on Souk Exclusive as we discussed about Mr. Jude Chiermaker and also the progress that has been made at the Nigerian capital market. It's been so great talking to you this afternoon and we do hope that this um, relationship will continue to blossom to better things in the future. Thank you so much for watching the program. I am your host, Lavina Emma.